Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a bit of yard work showing you how I make my favorite bacon wrapped chicken recipe and moving my little home office area into the first bedroom. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jessica Miller. I live just outside of Nashville, Tennessee with my husband of 15 years, Gary, and our 10 year old border collie, Percy. I do all things home cleaning, cooking, organizing, decorating, yard work, and vlogs. And I would be so grateful if you would subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're returning, it's so good to see you. Let's get into this video. So this tree is gonna come down. This is right behind our house. It's a hackberry tree. It's huge. And this makes a lot of pollen. It gets the roof all really 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 bad so like on the other side of the roof there's this area where all the leaves from this hackberry tree collect and then the little hackberries they stain the pavement and we just got this pavement you know this concrete and so it's just going to be smarter for us to take this down and we have so many tornadoes and storms here we just don't want to take a chance it's really close to the house so this one's going to come down and then we've got this little one over here. It's another, I think that's another hackberry tree. They're gonna take that one down. And then over here, this huge tree. So this enormous, beautiful tree. Yes, it's gorgeous, I know. It's gonna be hard to be without this tree. We don't like to take trees down, but sometimes when, when it could be more dangerous and it could fall either on our house or somebody else's, we don't want to take a chance. So this beautiful tree is going to come down as well. This one right here. Look at where it's routed out. And guess which way it's kind of leaning is that way. So that's a huge tree. This group came and they literally had this tree down in no time. All three trees down within hours and cleaned up. So I'm gonna remove this wood here and this blue tarp because it just looks ugly. And we're not gonna need this wood now because it's spring. And then I've got another, this is the tree that used to be here. Sadly, it's gone, but look, there was a little rotted point there. We wouldn't have wanted that to fall in the house with as many tornadoes as we have. And then this blue tarp over here, I'm just going to move that wood also. spring a lot of the outdoor work begins and trust me I've got my work cut out for me with all the things I want to do outside this year last year we were so hung up with getting the kitchen construction remodel completed that I didn't really piddle around the yard as much as I wanted to it brings me so much joy to cuten things up I don't even know if that's a word but you know what I mean make things look just so cute around the yard and clean it up like little areas that just bother me um, and things left out and just I just like things all put away cleaned up cute um, anything that looks ugly here and there like this big blue tarp um, and just clean it up a little at a time if I try to if I go out and do yard work I'll literally be out there all day and then I come inside and go oh my goodness everything's not done I still have this 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 all these things to do on my list um, that I totally forget about when I go outdoors. Does anybody else do that? You go outside and you get so caught up in, in the yard work that you forget about everything else in life and you're just so, I don't know, you're just into what you're doing outside and you forget about everything else. And then you go, oh shoot, I needed to do this. Um, so what I am trying to do now is just 
do like an hour here and there. So I'll set my timer and go, okay, one hour. You got one hour and you got to clean this wood up. Okay, done. And try to do it that way a little at a time instead of getting caught up outside. Um, on this day, I needed to do that because I had other things to get done, so. Now I've got my little list. I did get to do the, what did I just do? Moved piles of wood. So now I'm gonna cross that off my list. Anymore. I'm gonna add to my list the flat tire on the Kubota. Flat tire Kubota. So I'm moving my desk from in this corner where I'm facing all these beautiful windows to the first bedroom. So the desk is here. Now I'm just going to I normally work out in here, um, but I'm gonna make this corner where the desk is gonna go. Hopefully that'll help me be less distracted looking at a corner instead of a window. When my husband Gary and I first got married, I don't know what it was, but I couldn't figure out exactly which way I wanted the furniture in this house. And so I moved it every which way. Literally every month I was rearranging furniture. It was like this exciting thing just to try and figure out which way the furniture would go in each room, the way that we liked it best. And then in 2013, we thought we'd move. Um, this house was just, it didn't have a front porch or back porch or anything like that. It was just, just a house with a little, you know, brick walkway. Um, this was before the, all of our additions, before the kitchen and everything. So long story, but God evidently did not want us to move out. So we thankfully ended up moving back in and we missed it so, so much that we said never again will we move from this little piece, you know, this property we have and this little piece of heaven. So that was when we had the front and back porch built on. And after that, it became an oasis, like an oasis to us to be here. Um, we got new furniture and I haven't moved it since. So I figured out when we moved back in after moving out, that's when I really knew exactly how I wanted the furniture. And so I really haven't moved furniture much at all. So this is kind of weird right now that I'm doing this, but because the dining room is so pretty and there's so many beautiful windows back there, but it's a lot warmer up here in this part of the house, especially in the mornings, early in the morning still, it gets pretty chilly here. Um, so I wanted to move it here so I wouldn't get distracted. I'd be looking at a wall instead of the beautiful windows and seeing all the birds outside. It kind of distracts me when I'm trying to get work done. Um, so now I'm looking at a wall, um, which helps me to focus and also, the internet is faster in this part of the house. So it really helps with things like that. Okay, so we got this room, this is the bedroom, and then now I've moved this in here. So I've got the chair that needs to be upholstered, and then um, I still have a window to look out, so it's really nice, but work stuff here. And then, of course, it'll probably become a little messier as I get to work, but I like it. So to get started with the bacon-wrapped chicken, I'm just cleaning up the chicken breasts a little bit and preparing them to be wrapped in bacon. 
and I'm also cutting them in half. to get the thinner bacon because it just I like it to be as crispy as I can get it without actually cooking the chicken uh, because we will be putting that in the oven uh, but I do I put it in this uh, cast iron skillet just to kind of get the bacon cooked a little bit you know what this would be really good in an air fryer if you have an air fryer I don't have one but I can imagine just cooking the whole thing in an air fryer I don't know how the sauce would be with that though because that's coming next the sauce is so good Back when I first moved to Nashville, gosh, it's been over 20 years ago now, but I first moved here and I had this job as a nanny and the baby would sleep and while the baby was napping, I would go and look through her mom's cookbooks and she had this Mississippi cookbook and I found this recipe in there and I said, oh my gosh, I've got to make this. This looks amazing. And coming from the north, I've never heard of bacon wrapped chicken. I mean, my mom did make little bacon wrapped um, water chestnuts for New Year's Eve and stuff, and it was kind of, kind of reminded me of that. It was sweet, you know, with that salty bacon around it, and my mouth just started watering. I had to go home and make this right away, and ever since, I have loved this recipe. So I started with a third cup red onion and then minced garlic. I've got one teaspoon minced garlic here. God bless all the cooks in the world who don't use measurements and there are some recipes that I don't use measurements with. But with this one and with a lot of these that I'm sharing here, I do because you know I really like the way it tastes in the end and I think it's pretty darn perfect so I'm not going to mess with that. When you think about lemon and ketchup and then you throw in some garlic and you know you're just going wait a minute I don't know but then you hear about the Creole seasoning the cream style horseradish Worcestershire sauce honey all these other ingredients that make it so good cook it on the stove and it simmers and you smell that smell, you're sold. You're going, okay, now I see. <laughs> Your mouth starts watering and you're going, this poured over bacon wrapped chicken. So the bacon's a little browned, and but the chicken's not all the way cooked, so I poured the sauce over it. And then I just put it in the oven at about 375 for about 30 to 40 minutes, 45 minutes, just depending on your oven and then baste it every 10 minutes with the sauce. Well, I just poured the sauce over it. You can baste it every 10 minutes if you prefer, but I really just pour it all over it, let it cook, and it's just as delicious. I've prepared these little colorful purple, uh, gold, red, little mini potatoes with some asparagus, and I just pretty much just put olive oil on it and some sea salt and just whatever I want to throw on there. Sometimes I'll put garlic, sometimes I'll put like a lemon flavored olive oil, just depending on what you're in the mood for, and then bake it all. Or you can cook the asparagus in a pan and just bake the potatoes however you prefer, but they're delicious. I've enclosed the recipe in the description down below and don't forget to tag me on Facebook over at Jessica Miller Nashville or Instagram if you end up cooking this.
Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. And never forget, you are loved, you're special, and you are enough. God bless you. Thank you.